tail that wags. Hey everybody, Auntie Nessa here. The Tail That Wags is a channel strictly about the love, the enjoyment, and the health of dogs. It's dedicated to dogs. So I decided once a month I would feature a dog breed. There's a lot of breeds out there. So if you could put something in the comment section to let me know what the breed I should have for next month, that would help me a lot. Just to let you know that Saturday is the new day for new videos on the tail that wags. But you don't have to worry about that if you hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell because that's where the notifications are and then you'll know when the new show on Saturday comes. So for this month, I chose the Pitbull. The Pitbull is very misunderstood. But did you know that the Pitbull was America's dog? Did you know that a pit bull served in the armed services, was highly decorated, and saved many soldiers' lives? Do you know how the pit bull went from America's dog to a feared animal? Well, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to discuss five myths about the pit bull. Now, the name pit bull isn't a name of a breed. It's describing four breeds in the same family umbrella of four different types of dog. The American Staffordshire Terrier, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, the American Bully that comes in various sizes, and the American Pit Bull Terrier. Here's a little more in-depth chart for you. Now many dogs have been classified as pits but actually have no pit DNA. The first three look like pits but they have no pit in them at all. And these two ladies have some pit, and this last fella is mostly pit. So as you can see, you can't determine a breed by looks alone. Relatives to the pit bull go back before Roman times, but Britain created the pits. Pit bulls are bulldogs crossed with terriers. Their purpose was to hold, exhaust, bring down, and or kill a bull. Hence the bull in pit bull. England outlaw bull baiting in 1835. Because of the new law, ratting became popular. Gamblers gathered around the pit, pit in pit bull, and bet on how many rats the pit bull could kill. Yuck! It's a good thing that we have good entertainment today. Too bad they didn't have the tail that wags. Brits immigrated to the U.S. during the turn of the last century, and they took their pits with them. They lived in cities, but were working dogs on the prairie, hunting, herding, and protecting the land from predators, animals, and people. Pits are very loyal, and they want to please their humans, so they were perfect for frontier life. Pits are great family dogs, and they were known as the common man's dog. But rich people had them as well. Celebrities of long ago and even today have pits. Three presidents, Thomas Jefferson, Teddy Roosevelt, and Woodrow Wilson also had pits. Here's a picture with Helen Keller and her pit bull. Pit bulls were popular with the military from the Civil War to even today, but they were most loved and revered during World War I. They were used primarily for morale, but one pit bull stood above them all. Sergeant Stubby Stubby was a stray that became the mascot for the 102nd Infantry, 26th Yankee Division. He learned bugle calls, drills, and even knew how to salute. He was smuggled aboard an army ship headed to France and was allowed to stay because he saluted the commanding officer. Stubby was in the trenches for soldier morale, but he survived a chemical attack. The Germans attempted to gas his unit and he smelled the gas, barked and tried to drag the men out of the barracks in the middle of the night. But this little pit didn't stop there. He was in 17 battles, located wounded men in trenches, and stayed with them until medics arrived. In 1918, Stubby held a German spy who attempted to map the Allied trenches. He survived a grenade attack. He was awarded the Purple Heart twice and was the only dog to receive rank, Sergeant. He was the most decorated dog in history. 
And even some soldiers would be jealous. Now that's patriotism. Not bad for a little stray pit. Stray dogs are the best because they'll love you forever for rescuing them out of whatever bad situation they were in. After the war, pit bulls became America's dog. Pits were in several advertisements, in movies, and different shows, most notably the RCA dog and Little Petey in The Little Rascals. And kids, if you don't know who the Little Rascals were, you're going to have to ask your parents. Actually, you might need to ask your grandparents. Things started to change for the pit after World War II. GIs came home, started families, and moved to the suburbs. These families wanted fashionable dogs like the movie stars had. They had golden retrievers and labs. Other breeds became more popular because of TV and movies like Lassie and Little Toto here. Where did it all go wrong? It started when animal activists started to see that dog fighting was rising up in popularity in the late 60s and early 70s. Now, they were diligent in trying to let people know how horrible that dog fighting was, but they also described the dogs that they used in dog fighting, and pit bulls were one of them, and they talked about their strength and their tenacity, which made more of the criminal element want to have them even more. But in 1976, the law was passed to make dog fighting completely illegal. The 1980s brought hardcore drugs, particularly crack cocaine. Dealers used pits by abusing them to protect their investments. That coupled with negative media, this Sports Illustrated and Time magazine covers show, pits were thought of as mindless monsters and were feared by the general public. A long time ago, in this galaxy, I lived next door to a crack house. It was a horrible 10 months, don't even ask. But this crack dealer had two pit bulls to protect his investment or whatever the heck it was. And so what I understand how this works is when a crack addicted person or a crackhead can't afford to whatever, steal money or get money or whatever they do, when they can't give money to the crack man, they go to the store and steal whatever the crack man needs. So to feed the dogs, the crack man says, I need some meat. So he goes and he gets some meat and he brings it. Now, this guy is a nice guy to give his dogs fresh meat. This jerk takes cayenne pepper water and soaks the meat in the cayenne pepper water for days at a time. And he also doesn't feed the dogs for days at a time. Then he feeds the dog the pepper ridden meat. Now imagine what that would do to your psyche. Every time you ate, it was excruciatingly painful. And he did that to make them mean. But I could see their kindness in their eyes. They were abused. Now, back during that time, you could call the police and animal control and they did everything but laugh at you. Or they did nothing. But my mom and I kind of messed up his whole game because we'd walk by and throw a few sausages over, leave the house and throw some hamburger over. Nothing was better when that man was arrested. It was even better when I moved out of that neighborhood. But that just shows one way that people abuse these pit bulls to use their qualities against them. Now, another story I have is my mom's service dog, Teddy. Now, we are walking and we've seen this dog, poor pit. She got loose, went under the fence and went right for Teddy's chest and it almost killed him. But again, it's not the dog's fault. She was tethered with a very heavy chain to a huge tree and didn't have more than seven, eight feet to move around. And she was like that all day. Now imagine, these are things that are hurting your mental health. So if that would hurt you or someone you would know, of course it would hurt a dog. Better story that has a good ending. A neighbor of ours 
had problems with drugs and brought other people who had the same issue with buying and selling and taking drugs. And they adopted Max. Now Max was beaten and he would come down to visit me at all hours of the day. Now he knew when he came over, he got to play, he got good food, and better than everything, he got attention and love. He even came at 4.30 in the morning one time. Now my good friend fell in love with him. And somehow he went in the car with her and never came back. Max is a happy, healthy, and very loved dog. And he loves his mommy and daddy with all his heart. And he is well behaved. I have cared for the dogs in these pictures and they were all strays at one time. Each of them are determined, hyper, happy, and loving dogs. And it's all because they're loved, healthy, and properly cared for. Five myths about pits. Pits brains don't stop growing, making them crazy. Pits jaws lock. Abused pits can't be rehabilitated. Pits are more aggressive than other dogs and pits were called nanny dogs. Okay, myth number one. Pits brains grow and they don't stop growing, making them go crazy. That's a scientific impossibility. If your brain is swollen, it's usually from an accident and that's when they have to open the skull to go out. I'm not a brain surgeon, obviously. Any living being's brain kept growing and growing and growing, they would eventually die. So again, that's a scientific impossibility. Second is Pitt's jaws lock. No dog has jaws that lock and that includes the pit bull. Again, that's scientifically incorrect. Abused pits cannot be rehabilitated. You know, you shouldn't get pits that are strays because you don't know where they're from and they might be cruel. Several years ago, Michael Vick had a dog fighting ring and a lot of those animals were abused and hurt but 90% of them were rehabilitated and put in different homes and foster homes and have gone on to live great lives. Another myth is that pit bulls are more aggressive than other dogs. This is completely untrue. I looked at scientific journals and all the literature I could find on the temperament of pit bulls. And actually there was a study that found that pit bulls were more tolerable than even golden retrievers and border collies. So again, it's not the breed. It's the dog and how the human took care of that dog. And the last myth is that pit bulls were called nanny dogs. Now I thought this was true. So I scoured the in internet. I looked at all the literature I could and what I found is that in the 20s, there was a movie being made about Peter Pan and they had one of the pits become a nanny to the kids. And also in 1971, uh, the head of the Staffordshire Terrier Society talked about how great pits were with kids, and they are, and that how they were like nannies. And I think somehow that got mixed up with myth and fact. I think that myth got a lot of kids hurt and even killed and got a lot of pits put down. Because 85% of all dog bite fatalities, doesn't matter if they're pits or any other dog, the dogs are 85% more likely to be unaltered, unsocialized and improperly cared for. So if you have a dog that's not socialized, not properly taken care of, and this person thinks that this dog can sit and watch a toddler who likely has no idea what it's like or what you should do around a dog, kids pull on ears and poke eyes and pull noses. 
that's a disaster waiting to happen. Dogs and children need to be supervised. We love dogs. Doesn't mean that everybody should have a dog. If you take in a dog that you really don't have the time, energy, money, or whatever to take care of that dog, you are doing a disservice to everyone around you. You're gonna be stressed out yourself because you have this dog that you can't take care of. Your family is going to be upset. Your neighbors are going to be upset. And more important above all, is going to do damage to the dog. And if you need to get your dog fixed, there are plenty of volunteer organizations where you can spend some time where you can walk dogs or whatever you need to get your fix. So I just wanna let you know, if you love dogs and you feel guilty because you can't have one, don't. It makes you a good person because you're putting the dog above all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned something that you didn't learn before, that you didn't know. And again, there's a lot of dog breeds out there. Could you please put something in the comment section so I know what breed to go with next? Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also on that subscribe button, there's a little bell, hit that too. And I will see you on Saturday of next week. Thank you so much for watching. Such a cutie. These are some of the references I used for today's show.